Homeostatic mechanism in the body is responsible for maintaining the normalcy of various body systems. Whenever there is any change in behavioral pattern of any system, the effectors bring back the normalcy either by inhibiting and reversing the change or by supporting and accelerating the change depending upon requirement of the situation. This is achieved by means of feedback signals. Feedback is a process in which some proportion of the output signal of a system is fed back to the input. This is done more often intentionally to control the behavior pattern of the system. Whenever any change occurs, system receives and reacts to two types of feedback. One, negative feedback. Two, positive feedback. Negative feedback is the one to which the system reacts in such a way as to arrest the change or reverse the direction of change. After receiving a message, effectors send negative feedback signals back to the system. Now the system stabilizes its own function and makes an attempt to maintain homeostasis. But remember here the word negative is not bad but this type of feedback mechanisms helps maintain homeostasis more effectively than the positive feedback. Many homeostatic mechanisms in the body function through negative feedback. Let's take an example of thermoregulation that we have briefly discussed in the previous section. Thermoregulation is an example of negative feedback. It refers to the homeostatic regulation of body temperature the human body tends to maintain an internal temperature of about 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit equivalent to 37 degrees Celsius, also referred to as the set point. The core temperature is regulated chiefly by the nervous system, particularly the anterior hypothalamus and the preoptic area of the brain. Cooling down. The human body's temperature regulatory center is the hypothalamus in the brain. When the hypothalamus receives data from sensors in the skin and brain that body temperature is higher than the set point, it sets into motion the following responses. Blood vessels in the skin dilate, vasodilation, to allow more blood from the warm body core to flow close to the surface of the body, so heat can be radiated into the environment. As blood flow to the skin increases, sweat glands in the skin are activated to increase their output of sweat, diaphoresis. When the sweat evaporates from the skin surface into the surrounding air, it takes the heat with it. Heating up. When the brain's temperature regulatory center receives data that body temperature is lower than the set point, it sets into motion the following responses. Blood vessels in the skin contract, vasoconstriction, to prevent blood from flowing close to the surface of the body. This reduces heat loss from the surface. As the temperature falls lower, random signals to skeletal muscles are triggered, causing them to contract. This causes shivering, which generates a small amount of heat. Release of hormones increases metabolic activity and heat production in cells throughout the body. As you can see here, the negative feedback mechanism brings the temperature back to the set point, either by cooling effect or by heating effect, depending on the change in temperature. As for the positive feedback, positive feedback is the one to which the system reacts in such a way as to increase the intensity of the change in the same direction. And in some cases, it can init a day of vicious cycle. Positive feedback is less common than the negative feedback. However, it has its own significance, particularly during emergency conditions. One of the positive feedback items occurs during the blood clotting. Blood clotting is necessary to arrest bleeding during injury, and it occurs. The three stages are, when a wound causes bleeding, the body responds with a positive feedback loop to clot the blood and stop blood loss. Substances released by the injured blood vessel wall begin the process of blood clotting. Platelets in the blood start to cling to the injured site and release chemicals that attract additional platelets. As the platelets continue to amass, 
more of the chemicals are released and more platelets are attracted to the site of the clot. The positive feedback accelerates the process of clotting until the clot is large enough to stop the bleeding. Another example of the positive feedback loop is that controls childbirth. The process normally begins when the head of the infant pushes against the cervix. This stimulates nerve impulses, which travel from the cervix to the hypothalamus in the brain. In response, the hypothalamus sends the hormone oxytocin to the pituitary gland, which secretes it into the bloodstream so it can be carried to the uterus. Oxytocin stimulates uterine contractions, which push the baby harder against the cervix. In response, the cervix starts to dilate in preparation for the passage of the baby. This cycle of positive feedback continues with increasing levels of oxytocin, stronger uterine contractions, and wider dilation of the cervix until the baby is pushed through the birth canal and out of the body. At that point, the cervix is no longer stimulated to send nerve impulses to the brain and the entire process stops. That is all about the two types of mechanisms of action through which homeostasis is maintained. Explore our extensive library of over 1,800 video lectures to learn about a wide range of topics. Only on scadia.com.